here's the issue. I've got this hi-fi system behind me here, and this has loads of different music sources. You know, DCC, mini disc, cassette, reel-to-reel, -reel, CD, etc. And it's fine if I want to listen to them here, but sometimes I'm sat in front of the television and I'm looking at it and thinking, hold on a minute, got a nice surround system here, speakers, subwoofer, all the rest of it. So I thought it'd be nice if I could just send whatever's playing here wirelessly over there to listen to. Now, in the past, I've bought various different Bluetooth transmitter type devices, and they've all sounded terrible. I think most of them are designed for just sending to headphones. And I've looked online, there are various people who've been trying to solve this issue and nobody's managed to do it. Lots of people have asked the same question. Can I get an AirPlay transmitter? The answer is basically no. So next best thing, aptX, Bluetooth aptX. And uh, there aren't many transmitters that support aptX. I've found this one, it's a, as usual, a transmitter slash receiver, these things always are. So you can send your audio, say from your phone to this and then plug this into a Wi-Fi and listen through the speakers. But I want it to go the other way. I want the audio from this plugged into the back of here, sent out over there and then picked up on my TV AV system. Let's see if it works. Normally when you're dealing with some kind of Bluetooth device, you're establishing a connection with a smartphone or some other kind of device that has an interface where you can select something, you can type in a passcode, all that kind of stuff. Well, take this out of the equation and you've got this transmitting the audio, you've got the speaker on the television receiving it, but trying to get these two to communicate, I'm not quite sure how that's gonna work, but we'll get it out of the box, we'll set it up and we'll see if I can get that to happen. Now inside the cover here, we've got the two options for transmit or receive mode. Receive mode, you send your music from your smartphone to this thing and it then plays it through your hi-fi. Transmit mode, well they always use the example of getting the audio from your television and transmitting it through to headphones. I don't want to do that, I want to get the audio from a hi-fi and transmit it through to speakers. Is that going to work? Let's find out. Okay, looking at the back here, powered by a USB-C, and then it's split either side here, that says from TV, and that says to speaker. So split down the middle, optical in, three and a half mil in, optical out, three and a half mil out. Right, well, I'm gonna use this cable. This is gonna be my input, and I'm gonna put it in on this side. So that's gonna be from my hi-fi, the audio is going into this and then transmitted out over that. So I don't need any of these other cables other than the USB-C cable, which I'm gonna power it with. Okay, the only thing I need to do here really, on the side, move it into the transmit mode. And notice it also says bypass there. And that's because I could of course put an output in here and the audio could come through this and also be transmitted out over Bluetooth. Now, instead of rooting around behind the hi-fi just yet, I'm going to use this cassette player as the audio source while I'm testing this idea out. And I'll put the output from there into this. And then I'm also going to power this with a battery pack for the moment. OK, you're looking at the menu on my soundbar at the moment. We're going to go into the audio section in a minute. But I just wanted to show you, I've turned this thing on. It's showing that it's trying to connect with the LG television, which I don't want it to do. So. Let me see if I can get into the Bluetooth menu on this thing and activate that. Right, so I've activated the Bluetooth on the soundbar, and look. There it is, HTA 7000. Let's go OK. Connecting. Right, let's play the tape. <laughs> yeah, it's working fine so far. Let me just now go and plug it into the Hi-Fi. Okay, so I just need a component that has an output on it now that's taking the audio from the rest of the system and it just so happens that this one has a spare which is designed to go to a cassette deck but I've got that plugged in elsewhere so I could just take the audio from here and that's just a pass through now. now. I'm not too sure where to put this but I'll just shove it in there for the moment and sort it out later. Right, let's play mini disc. Okay, we're sticking to retro grooves and we'll just pick a track on here once it's read the table of contents. Okay, that'll do. Okay, so at the moment it's coming through the speakers as normal. I'll just turn this amp off though. And you can see down there the audio is still playing, it's just not going through to these speakers. So let's go over to the TV. Right, I think you can see I've got this muted at the moment, so let's just take off the mute. And there we go.
yeah, so it's working exactly how I wanted. All the components that are on the hi-fi can now be listened to alternatively through this sound bar underneath the television if I just want to sit on the couch and listen to music here. Now, this particular soundbar, this XTA7000, has a mode called Immersive AE. And if I switch that on, you'll see on the screen there, it mentions 360 spatial sound mapping. Now, I don't know exactly what it's doing, but it's doing something that is enabling it to sound a lot better. The audio that's coming through here gets spread out around the room, kind of seems to well, make it feel more 360 as advertised. So yeah, I've got absolutely no issues at all with the sound quality. And I think the reason why this particular device has worked out for me where some others that I've tried in the past haven't, is down to the fact it's a little bit more sophisticated. It costs a bit more, but it comes with this interface, this screen that allows me to select the destination for the Bluetooth. But now we've got it working, I just want to go through some of the additional options that are on this device. So let's just take a closer look at it. Okay, now I showed you this earlier on where you choose between using this as a transmitter or a receiver. But importantly, in the middle here, we've got an off position. The reason that's important is because unless you switch this off, it will keep trying to establish that Bluetooth connection with your soundbar, or at least it did in my case, which meant periodically it would wake up my soundbar and turn it into the Bluetooth mode. So yeah, if you're not using this, you want to be able to switch it off. Now, if we just go around to the screen on the front. Okay, now if you look at the top right there, we've got a number 15. That relates to the volume of the line input. And with this device, it defaults to 15, which is maximum, without any attenuation. But you can reduce that down if you wish. For example, if your line level that was coming into this was just too hot, it was distorting, you could reduce that down. Handy feature because a previous device that I had didn't let you do that and my line level was indeed too great and it oversaturated. Another thing I want to point out, we've got this play icon in the middle here. If I press OK, it turns to pause. Basically that isn't actually pausing the audio, it's just pausing the transmission of it over Bluetooth. But you can just quickly press that if you wanted the audio to cut out. Top left, you can see TX, that's showing it's in transmit mode. Auxiliary, that's showing I'm getting the audio in over the auxiliary input. If I unplug that, it defaults back to the optical input. I'll explain the SBC in a moment. But if we just go around to the side here, this is where we choose our standard of transmission. So we've got Aptex HD on the right, that's the one I want to use. Aptex Low Latency on the left, that's what you'd use if you were using this with a television and you wanted the lip sync to be as close on your headphones as it possibly could be to the video you were watching. In the middle, FS, well that's fast stream, and that is if you want to connect this to two pairs of suitable earbuds or headphones simultaneously. But if we go back over here, that's what I wanted to use it in for the best quality of audio, but you'll have noticed it's showing SBC there. SBC is a lower quality standard than Aptex HD. And the reason that's showing is because that is what it's negotiated with my soundbar. It turns out that my top of the range, super expensive Sony soundbar doesn't support Aptex HD. Perhaps I should have read up on this a little bit more. I just kind of assumed that it was all the top specs, but no, Sony used their own version of an HD Bluetooth transmission standard called LDAC, or I don't know if it's LDAC, I don't know how you pronounce it, but yeah, that's Sony's one, LDAC. Aptex HD, which they reckon is not as good as LDAC, is a still a higher quality, supposedly, than this one, which is SBC which is like the fallback standard, kind of standard Bluetooth audio, really. The thing is, there's a lot online about Aptex HD versus LDAC. You can find videos all about that kind of stuff. Truthfully, from my experience here, I've got no problems at all with SBC. Sounds fine. Remember, this is a secondary option for me. This isn't the main way I'll be listening to music all the time but I haven't noticed any problems with it. But then again, actually, let me just pause my mini display across the room over there. Um, I've thought maybe I should try Aptex HD. I mean, perhaps if I'd searched around, I could have found an LDAC compatible transmitter, but since I've now got an Aptex HD, well, I've got to get myself an Aptex HD receiver. 
because I thought, let's find out if Aptex HD does sound any better than SBC, at least to me in these circumstances. So uh, let me plug this into my soundbar. What's going to happen here is the transmitter, instead of going straight to the soundbar, will now go to this, and then this will come out via either an optical or a line out into the soundbar. Now I've got a spare line input on the soundbar, so I'm just going to do it analog out from this into the soundbar. Let's see if it sounds any different. You ought to be able to tell in the video, but I'll tell you if it does. I promise. Okay, so for this one, I stuck with the same manufacturer. I thought it's best to keep it in the family. It's more likely to work together properly, but you can see it's a more basic device. If we just have a look at it here, it doesn't have that nice screen and interface on it, but uh, we've got the option to receive or transmit on this one. So I've set it to receive around this side, Aptex HD or Aptex low latency. So of course I put it into HD and uh, we've got the power button and the Bluetooth connect and all that kind of stuff. So similar kind of stuff, but without the nice interface. So it wouldn't work as well as a transmitter as the other one, but I'm hoping it'll work fine as a receiver. We've got the same input and output here, optical in, optical out, line in, line out, and it's powered via a micro USB on this one. So let me just plug it into this soundbar and then we'll get the two things connected and we'll see if Aptex actually does sound better than SBC. Okay, I've switched it on and you can see from that flashing light at the top left there, it's trying to establish a connection. So let's go to the other end and sort that out. Right, there it is, it's found it. So let's select that one. Right, there we go, we're connected to it and it's on Aptex HD now. So let's have a listen. Wow, this speaker really could do with a dust. Anyway, uh, I'll just mute the audio there because a um, bit of a turn up for the books. I was not expecting that. Sounds a lot better to me. Now, uh, the reason I'm not expecting it is because various things I've read, people are saying, well, they didn't notice much of a difference. Maybe it's, uh, maybe I'm imagining it, but my imagination tells me that sounds an awful lot better. And if I had to try and describe it, I think if I said something that, to me, almost like, say you've got a recording on a Type 1 cassette. This will be something that everyone can relate to. You've got a recording on a Type 1 ferry, and then you go listen to the same thing on a compact disc. Just a lot clearer all around, really, and um, just seems to be a better quality of sound. That's basically it. So I need to find a way to hide this thing around the back of here. That won't be a problem. Um, so let me explain how much I've spent here. First off, the original transmitter device. That's £62. I think it's £67 on UK Amazon. Then there's a £5 off voucher underneath it, or there was when I bought mine. So £62. And then the simpler little device, that was like, uh, I think, £40. So all in, made about 100 quid. I've spent. Now, of course, I didn't need to do that. I could have just got this thing, transmitted it through to the Bluetooth, and I would have been quite happy with it. But now I've got this, I've uh, got to use it, because uh, it does sound better to me. So... Look, there's loads of these types of devices around. I didn't necessarily need to get these ones, uh, but I got them and they worked. So I'm gonna put links to these in the video description. You can probably list a hundred alternatives that are cheaper and do different things. And if you wanna get one of those, go ahead. Uh, I can't test them all. I've tested this one and it works for me. I think the main thing with this is it's got this screen on it and it let me choose where I wanted the audio to go. That's what was important in my particular way of using it. Of course, I'm not using this as the manufacturer intended, either to send the TV audio out to some headphones or send my smartphone audio off to a hi-fi that isn't Bluetooth equipped. So I'm not here to review that side of things because that wasn't what I was interested in. I wanted to get the sound from my hi-fi, all the different components into this soundbar. I managed to do it. It works perfectly fine for me. Yeah, it cost me a hundred quid, but I'm not complaining because I like the results. So uh, that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.